This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi friends. I hope everyone's doing super dandy today because for today's video, it feels like I'm gonna be doing like an aerobics class right now, like teaching you guys, but no, we're not doing aerobics today. We are doing knitting. We're, we're not doing knitting, we're talking about knitting today. We're talking about knitting. That's why I got my big stash of yarn here. Anyways, we're doing a deep dive, like a real deep dive. I've done one deep dive just like this, but I've done it for sewing, but sewing, <laughs> it's definitely a big investment to get into sewing and making your own clothes. So I wanted to show another option on how to make your own clothes, but an option that's really cheap, like knitting. Sound good? Okay. So personally, I started knitting, or I guess my first experience with knitting was when I was like 12 years old. I learned how to knit, my mom taught me how to knit, even though she wasn't great. She learned how to knit, and then I was like, ooh, I wanna try, and then she taught me how to knit. And then I knit half a scarf, because you know, a 12 year old, not much patience like I just it just took too long so I just gave up and never finished and then never picked it up until last year where I just wanted to learn how to knit I got on the YouTube I got all my supplies I thrifted a lot of my supplies like I started with thrift needles knitting needles from the thrift store these ones right here anyways those are the knitting needles I learned how to knit on because they were cheap. They were a few dollars from the thrift store and I didn't even know that I was gonna like knitting. So why was I gonna invest in a whole bunch of supplies and spend a lot of money if I didn't know? So I guess first pro tip, get some knitting supplies from your friends, your grandma, your mom, or the thrift store. But after I got my supplies, I pretty much just went onto the YouTube, the Google, and I taught myself how to knit just by watching videos, looking at websites, just by looking at inspiration, and you know, Bob's my uncle. Well, he's not really my uncle, he's your uncle, but. But that's the end of my story and how I began knitting. So let's get into your story. That sounded really cheesy. <laughs> let's get into how you guys can get started knitting. Yeah, that didn't sound any better. So number one, you need some supplies. So if you're like me and you're kind of cheap and you didn't want to go out and buy like brand new knitting stuff, if you didn't even know you were gonna like it, then go to your thrift store, pick up some knitting needles, preferably chunky ones, or borrow some from your friends, your grandma, your mom, like knitting needles are everywhere. You're also gonna need some yarn, a yarn needle, which is important, also very cheap. You're gonna need scissors, which most people have at their house already. You're gonna need stitch markers, which you don't need to go out and buy the fancy stitch markers. You can just use scrap yarn. That's what I used for a while before I even got stitch markers. So different colored yarn will do. And a measuring tape, or if you don't have a measuring tape, just a ruler, just something where you can measure it. But those are just the basics. There are lots of other supplies you can get, but for your first project, those are what you need. You don't need anything fancy. Those will get you through your first project. So we're just going to take a quick break from the video because today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. I personally started using Squarespace back in college when I started my business and since then I have been using it. At first my website just listed all the services I offered but then as it grew I was able to add an e-commerce store and also a blog. It is super easy to create a professional website with Squarespace so if you guys want to try out Squarespace or get a domain I do have a coupon code for you guys where you guys can get 10% off. All you have to do is use my coupon code Jenna Phipps and you guys will get 10% off your domain or website. But now that you guys know the basic supplies you guys do need, you're gonna probably get a little overwhelmed when you go to the yarn store and you're just like, I'm just gonna go get some yarn, it'll be great. And then you get overwhelmed with all the different widths, all the different materials in yarns and just all the different sizes of needles. So let's simplify it, let's simplify it. So let's start with yarn. So for yarns, there are a lot of materials when it comes to yarn, but I would say the most popular one out there, which is probably most of the yarn that people buy is acrylic. This is gonna be the cheapest type of yarn and unfortunately the least sustainable, but it's the most accessible for pretty much everyone. As you get to more luxury yarn, which are more sustainable, which are more natural fibers, so it'll be like wool, mohair, cotton, actually cotton's not that expensive, cotton's really cheap too. Unless you get like really fancy cotton, beyond the point. And so on, you can just, you can just get crazy. But usually natural fibers are more pricey, but they're a lot nicer. So when choosing the material for your yarn, it really depends on you. 
like your budget. If you have a big budget and you're willing to spend a lot of money on yarn because you really want a really nice quality item you're making, then 100% I always recommend natural fibers. But if you're a newbie, which most of you guys are if you're watching this video, then you're probably gonna start with an acrylic yarn just because you can get it at Walmart, any craft store. Majority of yarn, when you see it at a store, it's acrylic. It's really cheap. And when you're starting out, you probably won't even notice a difference between them unless you really start really investigating and really looking at the yarns. They're probably all gonna look the same to you. Like, at least they did for me. Or at least I personally did not know that people actually knitted with wool. Like I thought when people knit with wool was like that really, really itchy, not very comfy wool. And I was like, nope, I do not want that because that does not feel good in my body, but acrylic feels nice. Like a lot of them are like super, super soft. But there are a lot of really good natural fibers out there, like a merino wool, that is not itchy. But to back it up, Cheapest yarn, if you don't have a big budget and you don't want to spend a lot of money, then you can just get a basic acrylic. But if you're starting to make clothes that are really, really nice, you're spending a lot of time on making these clothes, I recommend getting a nicer yarn. Investing in a nicer yarn just so it's nicer. You're wearing it on your body. You want it to feel good. You want it to look good. So that's what I do at least. Yeah. But I do want to mention just briefly about the sustainability aspect. If you don't really know, you're like, oh, I don't really care, like acrylic's fine, then maybe this will give you a little more information because acrylic, it is plastic. It is man-made, so it doesn't really biodegrade, de decompose. It's not really biodegradable. You get it? Meanwhile, natural fibers are. So I personally try to do my best to get natural fibers when I'm making anything, if I have the option, just because when I'm not here right now or that garment's not being used by me and it gets thrown out, natural fibers, it only takes like three to five months to decompose. But acrylic, on the other hand, she can be like 500 plus years. Yeah, it's a long time. That all being said, don't feel like you have to go and get really expensive natural fibers. Like if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Another thing you want to take into um, effect or, you know, you want to think about is these things, the aftercare. So some yarns, like these natural fibers, <laughs> they're a little bit harder to take care of it and you gotta hand wash them. Some you can put in the washing machine, but you gotta check the labels to make sure you can. Allergies and sensitivities. Some people are allergic to like natural fibers, like mohair. I've heard people allergic to mohair so they get alpacas. So that's another thing. Depending on your skin, what you can handle, that will also decide for you what yarns you can actually get. Type of project. This one is also very, important because if you're making a tank top for summer you're not going to be using this um chunky wool you might die well you probably wouldn't die but you know it, it wouldn't be that comfortable you'd be sweating a lot okay next thing my last thing about yarn i'm almost done with yarn even though i yarn is exciting okay i could talk about yarn for 24 hours straight if i wanted to i just don't think anyone listen but so when you buy your yarn here it has this label on here. They all do, they all have a label here. And on the label, it will tell you, it will tell you how to care for the yarn, which most of you probably know because you, if you look inside your clothes, it tells you how to care for it. Same thing for yarn. It also will tell you the needles you need for this. So when you're making a project, you know what needles you gotta use with the specific yarn. It will also tell you the gauge, which you probably don't know what gauge is, which I don't expect you to, because when I was first starting knitting, I was like, what the heck is gauge? I don't need to know that. I d just forget about it, but it's actually really important. So here's a little demonstration of what gauge is. So pretty much gauge is just the measuring system in knitting because every single person knits differently. Some will knit tighter and some will knit looser. So when you go buy a pattern, this helps because now you can figure out if the person that made the pattern knits loose or they knit tight. So you can have the same gauge so it fits perfectly and it's not too small. Makes sense? This is just the overview, so I'll have some links down below in the description so you guys can do a big deep dive on it. And I know I said that was my last one, but one pro tip, one more pro tip, okay? Is when you're getting very nice yarn, like natural fibers, expensive yarn, most of the time it will come in a skein like this and do not try to knit right from this without unraveling it and putting it into a ball. I have done it and 
it definitely learned my lesson because it will just tangle into a big mess and um, you won't have a great time unraveling that. Now for needles. Needles, there's a few different types. So there's actually three types of needles. There are straight needles, which are what I started with and what most people think about when you think of knitting. The next type of needles are circular needles and personally, my favorite. And the last type is double pointed needles. And personally, I have never used them just because I don't really need to use them because I use circular needles. So I'm not gonna really talk about those, but most two common ones are these ones are my circular needles. And these ones right here. So if you're listening to my story, you remember that these are the needles I started off with and I learned how to knit on and how I relearned how to knit on was with these ones. Just because when you're starting off, these look scary. These look really scary. And most people don't go for these when you're starting off because you think these are from a different universe and you have no idea. They're just overwhelming. You don't know what to do with them. So you go for these, but really, these are the exact same things. Same thing, yeah. The only difference is that there's a cable connecting these two and there's no cable connecting these two. So personally, if you don't have any needles and you're okay with putting a little bit of money and investing in a pair, then I would get these circular ones. They will just last you the longest and be better in the long run. And the reason why I say that is one, they just feel nicer when you're knitting and two, you can knit in the round, which means you can knit a full circle around, so you keep going round and round and round and round, but with these flat needles, these bad boys, you can only knit flat panels, and then you have to sew the seams together. The circular needles right here are kind of like the new era of knitting. This is what everyone uses pretty much, I would say nine times out of 10. Like, I don't really see many people sew knit knit with flat needles. Like I do see some people, but most people's preferences are these ones just because they feel a lot nicer. Let me demonstrate. That's a lot of movement. This is not, this is not very nice. Like they're ginormous. Look at this. It's so small. The end of them is way easier. You can go down here and you're not hitting anything, you know, but these ones, circular ones are not going to be easiest to find secondhand. Most people, when they find them secondhand, are going to be this one. So either one will work when you're starting off. Not going to get in too much detail and overwhelm you guys, but both of these will work. They're the exact same thing, except these ones. They're just nicer. They're just nicer. Okay. So now that we know the supplies, I know I had to go really in depth about the yarn, but I just kind of geeked out about it. So now that we have all our supplies, we are ready, we are pumped, we got our yarn, we're just like, I will make something with this. How do we get started? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys. But first, another pro tip, start with light color yarn when you're starting off. It's a lot easier to see the stitches, dark, like if you're working with black yarn, it's just harder to see. So, light colored yarn, or this, all these. So now for your first project. For your first project, I always recommend a scarf. But some people don't want to do a scarf because it can take a decent amount of time, like my first project ever, it was a scarf, and I failed because it was too freaking long to do. I just didn't have the patience to actually finish it. So my plan B option for your first project is a dish towel, which is actually kind of ha handy. It's, it's handy. You'll use it. But say you want to work on a scarf. That's your first project. I recommend going for a chunkier needle. So I personally started with a 10 millimeter needle. What is that, US 15? And I would say this, this is a chunky knitting needle. This is a chunkster. Look how tiny that knitting needle is. Chunky knitting needles are your best friend. It'll be faster. It'll just, it'll just be easier. You're then gonna wanna find the yarn that is the corresponding size for your needle here. So you're definitely gonna wanna look and label like I taught you guys. And it'll say right up here, right there, this one is for a 12 millimeter. But if you don't wanna commit to a scarf that could take you like, I don't know, like five, 10 hours, you don't wanna commit to that and you wanna do something in a few hours, dishcloth, like I mentioned, and for a dishcloth, you're not gonna wanna use a big chunky needle, you're gonna wanna use something a bit smaller, so maybe like an eight millimeter needle, probably around that, and then you're gonna need the corresponding yarn to go with it. So again, look at the labels. 
But before you start those projects, they're really simple. There's only three things you need to learn for both the projects. You need to know a cast on, which is how to get the yarn on the needle and get all the stitches. Number two is a knit stitch. That is the only stitch you'll be repeating to make the whole item, whether it's a scarf or a dishcloth. And three is how to get those off a cast off, how to finish the project. You'll also use your yarn needle, the itty bitty needle to thread in all the yarn afterwards, but that's really easy. But once you're done your first project, you'll be pretty comfortable with the knit stitch. Like you'll be like, you know, whipping it up and you'll be pretty good. Then I would learn a long tail cast on, and then you'll also wanna learn the purl stitch. When you do the knit stitch for one row, and then you do the purl stitch, and then you do knit stitch, purl stitch, this is when you get the stock in it pattern that you see on pretty much every single garment of knit that you guys own. That sweater you have in your closet, stock in it. Once you get more comfortable with that, then you can start learning decreases and increases. And then once you learn the decrease and increases, you're pretty much set to make pretty much any garment, unless you want to get really fancy with different techniques. But those are like your basics to make any type of knit shape. So, okay, okay, now we're feeling good. We got our, you know, basic stitches learned. We are feeling like a pro. But personally, when I was learning how to knit, I didn't go in my way to go learn increases and decreases if I wasn't going to be using them. I just learned them when I was working with patterns. And that's pretty much how I learned everything was just working with patterns. And in the pattern, it'll say you need to increase here. And that's when I'll go to the www YouTube, which you're on right now, and look up how to do those. There's so many amazing, amazing tutorials on there that are just like a minute or so. And it'll teach you pretty much every single knitting thing you need to know in the whole entire world. Also, another little heads up kind of Pro tip, not really a pro tip though. When you're starting to look at patterns and starting to buy patterns and starting to make things, you're gonna get overwhelmed. I'm just gonna put it out there. When I first looked at my first pattern and I was so excited to like make a vest, I was like, I'm gonna do this. They said it's super easy, it is beginner friendly. It's just a little overwhelming look at them because they do a lot of abbreviations where they just put a K instead of knit. And it's like, why can't you just write out knit? Like, why? And they do that for pretty much everything. Just know that you're gonna be going back and forth to the little index of what that means and then going to the index and then going to YouTube, how to do it, go back, like, it's all about the learning journey. It's, it's, yeah. But I know some of you, you're gonna be real excited after this video because I've just like pumped you guys up and you guys are just like, you know, ready to get started and clapping your needles. So. I've accumulated some free projects for you guys to start. So if you guys are super, super beginner, then obviously I have a free dishcloth pattern for you guys to do. Very, very easy. Very first project friendly. Friend friendly. Friendly. That's a great word. But if you do have a little bit of knowledge, but you're still a beginner, I do have other projects that I've listed down below, like a beginner sweater with this free pattern by Vicky Knits. I love this. I want to make this one. Also got a beanie or toque if you're in Canada, right here, the David hat. And I also have an easy peasy lemon squeezy video for you guys on how to make a scarf, a scarf. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed my guide on how you guys can start knitting your own clothes. I'm really excited to see what you guys make. And if you guys take up knitting, let me know. Connect with me on Instagram. I show a lot of my knit stuff on there and I love seeing your guys' knit stuff on there. So tag me on Instagram if you make something. That is it because my stomach is starting to growl. It is very hungry. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get eat, get eat. Man, I'm making up some good words today. I'm gonna go eat. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.